Aquaculture is a really cool sector and aquaculture done well is a very compelling proposition. Most of the history of time, the only way of getting fish is you catch it from the wild. Over half of the fish that we eat on the planet now is farmed. If it was only available through wild caught activity, we'd run out of fish quite quickly. We think aquaculture can be a way of producing food that we can be proud of with a low environmental footprint that can help feed a growing population in concert with maintaining a fantastic environment. We're at the very beginning of this journey. The thing we're laser focused on is growing one species and only doing that. We just grow king salmon. The salmon industry in New Zealand is relatively a minnow on the global scale. We're less than 1% of the salmon produced, but the type of salmon we farm is unique. And it truly is the champagne of salmon, the, the Rolls Royce of salmon. We're the largest king salmon farmer and processor in New Zealand, and we've done it over 30 years from the infancy of the industry, and over that time we've been able to apply classical breeding techniques to select the product on the basis of taste, texture, colour, size, quality, all those elements, and develop this unique breed which has acquired the common analogy of this is the Wagyu of salmon. Back in the 90s, uh, New Zealand King Salmon started a breeding program. And through that, we've created a unique breed that has been isolated and separate from other breeds or fish from around New Zealand. We went and selected from a range of different strains in New Zealand. We set up a range of families that would enable us to specifically select those that did best for what we wanted. We needed to improve our fish performance and using those breeding values, we select the best of the best. Genetic traits in fish can take quite some time. We breed from our fish when they're three years old, so we can't see the results of that breeding until those offspring become 18 months and harvestable. We've got their genetic tracking from their parents' parents back to the 1990s. Going through from 1994 through to 2020, we've now had nine generations of fish. In 2021, we're going to start the 10th generation. That really has allowed us to dial in to the traits of our fish and to really establish a highly sophisticated um, breeding program for Aura King. We've been running our classical breeding program for over a quarter of a century. For other people to join the race now, a quarter of a century behind us, we're in a pretty special space. We're really, really lucky that we've got our Takaka site. We've got access to the clean, clear water of Tawai Kurapupu Springs. Quality of the water coming from the springs and feeding into these animals means that our incubation systems are sound. I don't think there's anywhere in the world you can build something like this. It just, gravity feeds in, there's no pumps, the ambience here is actually quite awesome. It's a pretty cool thing to show people around because there's no pumping noise, there's no working noise except for vehicles. So we've got that beautiful water, these beautiful fish. It makes sense that we're going to have beautiful aura king at the other end. We use that water and we've got to make sure we look after that. So when we return that water into the stream, it's got more oxygen in it than it had when we took it out. It also comes with responsibility. So it's up to us to keep it as clean as we can possibly keep it so that we can continue to farm here. We owe it to our neighbours and we owe it to our generation's future to do a really good job and, and really respect it. We're liaising with our genetic specialists to ensure that we're matching fish with desirable traits and breeding them together to get the best outcome possible. We take the eggs and put them through a little bit of a check where we check their weights and then we also do a 50 egg weight using a scoop and that allows us to know how many eggs we have per female. After they've had the overcheck, they move over to the crossing table. 
and then using three mils from two separate males for every female clutch that we fertilise. We then start to measure the embryonic development using accumulative time units. Temperature of the water over the time that it's been in that water and that gives us the development of the eggs. When you put eggs into incubation, you've got a very short window where you can move them around and you have to let them rest and let the embryo develop properly. And once they get to 300 accumulative time units, and it allows us to move those eggs around safely without doing any damage to them. Once the eggs are eyed, they're then transferred to our tent bin hatchery, which is what you'd describe as our hatchery grow-out facility. We are at the moment in Tenburn Hatchery where we produce our smolt ready to be transferred to the sea farms. Whatever we do in fresh water is going to be directly reflected in seawater. So we need to make sure that we supply the best quality smolt so they can deal with the challenges of the sea farm in a, in a better way. We are filtering the water, we monitor oxygen, CO2, pH, to make sure that every single day we provide the best water quality to our eggs. We are able to pump 2.2 cubic meters of water a second, but no one can guarantee that we're gonna have the same volume of water over the next 10 years. Part of that vision is to develop new facilities where we use the water in a more efficient way. So at Tentburn, we have nearly completed phase one of our five phase freshwater expansion. This is critical for us as a company. It allows a significant expansion of our freshwater resources. You know, it allows us to make really great use of, the, of a scarce resource in freshwater. So it's going to significantly increase our freshwater capacity, but it's going to do it in a really sustainable manner by utilising recirculation technology. We're going to transfer the operation that we currently have in our raceways. We're going to move everything towards this new development. We're finally in the, in the middle of this project. So we're hoping to see it completed by the end of 2021. So once we receive the eggs from Takaka, we transfer those eggs into the basket. Once the fry hatch, they swim through the screen and they will be leaving in this substrate. It's mimicking the rocks or the stones that you find in the nature. We are pioneering, we are learning, we are trying to innovate in many ways. So we want to grow, we want to produce more smolt, but at the same time, we are aiming quality. Once it's absorbed its yolk sac, it comes through a process called swim up, where it comes to the surface, and that's when it's becoming a fry, which means it's time to relocate it, and that's when actually we start the first feeding of the fish. Salmon are an amazing species in that they live fresh in salt water. To achieve that, they go through a process known as smoltification. Smoltification is the process when they experience physiological changes in order to capture the oxygen and seawater. Once the fish have gone through the smoltification process, they're physically able to go to the ocean. Twenty years ago, I wasn't aware how important agriculture was for our lives. We are running out of land-based crops. Now it's time to see the ocean as a future protein source. Aquaculture is gonna be a critical player in food security and maintaining food security. New Zealand's in a very good position to be a real leader in terms of sustainable aquaculture. 
we've got this huge marine environment that has the ability for us to literally feed the world. When you farm in the marine environment, you do farm in a public space. When you do that, you have to go through certain permitting and consenting processes. I can't think of another activity that has the level of interrogation and assessment that aquaculture is required to do for any new farm. The community should be assured that there is a very detailed process that you have to go through to get the approval to farm. Every aquaculture farmer wants a healthy ocean because they're farming right in it. And so our science at Cawthron helps them manage their farm in a sustainable manner while, of course, maximizing the benefits that aquaculture can bring. So this is the feed that we feed our salmon. And this feed here is made up of basically protein, oils, and carbohydrate to bind it all together. Salmon food's our biggest cost, so it's about 60 to 70% of our production cost, so it's absolutely critical that every single pellet gets to a salmon's mouth. When salmon farming first started, we used to use 100% fish oil, 100% fish meal. There's only so much fish to go around in the ocean. For a long time, I've been looking at trying to find alternative diets for salmon to reduce the environmental impact of feeding fish fish, but also to have a better quality fillet for the consumer, because that's where the, the rubber hits the road. The consumers want to have a product that has high amounts of omega-3, but is also sustainable, and it's a really difficult thing to balance up. By changing the salmon's diet to have more land-based products in it, it makes it uh, a lot more sustainable. It's really important to us that we get each of those individual ingredients from sustainable sources. The great thing about aquaculture is you control all of your inputs. Our fish do not have to fight gravity. They do not need to warm their blood. So that means they can be stunningly efficient. Our fish, each one of them lays 7,000 eggs. So you can have a fertility out of the sea that you just can't achieve anywhere else. That's an amazing foundation on which to build a sustainable business. We can make salmon in New Zealand a really sustainable source of omega-3 for high quality nutrition. The good thing about king salmon that really sets it apart is the high fat content. You don't have to eat a lot to get a week's worth of omega-3. Not only is it good for the planet, it's good for the people who eat it. And the fact that I can have this indulgence but it can actually be nutritionally good for me. What other food enjoys that sort of combination? I guess it makes it sound pretty simple that you just put the smolt in, you feed them and keep the nets clean. But there's lots and lots of detail that mean that we can successfully farm king salmon. I mean, they're really difficult to farm. The, the sea farm's job is all about maintaining the quality of the fish, ensuring we've got a really good environment, so net cleaning becomes really big. So in the early days, we used to lift the nets by hand out of the water, water blast them and sun dry it. That's changed now, and what we've got is in-water net cleaners. I'm Danielle Friend. I'm a skipper for New Zealand King Salmon on their net cleaning team. This is one of our vessels, the Chinook, and we operate a big three-headed Yanmar net cleaner to clean the nets and create a healthy environment for our salmon. So it's basically a robotic net cleaner that you drive around and it's got water blaster jets on it and the water blaster jets clean the biofouling off in the water. When we're working with developing in-water net cleaners, there's a local company, Boss Aqua, that we worked in conjunction with and they developed one of the world's first automatic net cleaners. That's pretty ingenious and they're selling that around the world now. 
Now, the challenge for King Salmon is that in New Zealand, it is quite a restrictive thing. You know, we do cherish our ocean space, and we want to look after that more than anything else. Taking that blue economy approach, you want to be doing farming in a way that hits on a number of things. It's about growing the economy, creating jobs. It's about maintaining healthy seas at the same time, and if anything, reversing the degradation. It's about maintaining and improving the well-being of coastal communities as well. So if you're in the blue economy and we're farming Aura King Salmon, we want to bring out the most value we can out of using that ocean space. No one wants to be in an industry that is not sustainable. You know, we want to be the industry that actually replaces those sunset industries and carries on. My name's Tania Boyd, I'm a supervisor at New Zealand King Salmon. We're standing outside the dispatch area of the King Salmon where the finished product is actually sitting right next to me here ready to get loaded onto a truck. Who knows who I'm rubbing up against that's going to be eating this fine product. Could be heading off for the Queen, we don't know, so we'll look after it. One of the things I certainly enjoy is when we have chefs come on site. I've been fortunate enough to be in on a Sunday night and happen to show some chefs around. Perhaps a lot of them think just everything's just automated, like a car being made, but you know, it's totally different, it's really hands-on. Our King Salmon is extremely unique. There's not really any manufacturers who will manufacture a machine just for King Salmon. Our processes are very manual. With manual, you can take a lot more care than a machine that just goes through thousands of fish an hour. We only pump in a small amount at a time to ensure that temperature is below four degrees throughout the whole process. Once the salmon come off the G&G line, they come down to our master grader. This is a, such a critical point in the process. Each individual fish that come down the line have the potential to be aura, but the master grader, with his years of experience, will separate the best of the best from the rest. We've gone through the hard work of creating the unique breeding program. We have to, therefore, really nurture every fish to give it its potential to become an aura king fish. It moves you away from that sort of commodity thinking of I'm growing this big population of fish. And you see it across the entire company, you know, that sense of pride, and it's not just a number product. It is, you know, it's an aura kingfish. Each fish is handled and each fish is looked at for that quality to go, yeah, you're an aura king. I remember the first time we had a discussion about Tai. One of our freshwater teams said, look, I think we can do this in freshwater. Then I got invited to Vancouver Island from the Tai Club. There were 25 boats out there and no one got one bite. Next morning, thought I would try again. Virtually straight away, got this bite, caught this amazing Tai King Salmon. There were 17 fish of these caught in the wild last year. I happened to catch number seven. And now we've got more than that grown in our freshwater facility. Yeah, one of the great things about being involved with Aura King is I was one of the first chefs to be working with the product, and particularly in 2018 when the Taiyi was first brought to the market. And this is an absolute monster, you know, 13 plus kilos of magnificence. When that arrived in the kitchen, I'll never ever forget it. It was just something else.
There's nothing commodity about the salmon from New Zealand, and certainly not in terms of the Aura King. In fact, I would argue it has a market treatment even more selective than champagne. It's a pretty amazing process, and to be able to convey that kind of thing to the customers, I think it makes a big difference. People want to know the provenance of their ingredients nowadays. At Vinnie's, when we used to have the whole fish being delivered with its gill tag, it was like uh, the creme de la creme of salmon. Very special, very unique, and just knowing all the people that are involved in that stage, from the hatchery right through to the delivery in the restaurant. That gives an amazing sort of confidence and trust that you can pass on to your customers. You're serving great quality produce with provenance behind it. Yeah, it's really important for us to work with, with suppliers that have the same ethos as, as we believe. I mean, I've been working with Aura King Salmon now for about two years, and I've got to be honest, it is the best salmon that I've used. I mean, the fattiness of it, the richness of it. Aura King Salmon stands out to me as a product, just the fattiness and the overall flavor. Um, in comparison to most salmon I've eaten before, the fat is great. It cooks extremely well. For me, eating Aura King Salmon has got just this absolutely beautiful, clean, magnificent flavour of purity. There's just this natural, beautiful moistness to the salmon, which is just fantastic. I really like what they say, Aura King Salmon is the way you of the sea, because it is like this. It's not another salmon that gives you the same texture, the same fattiness, the same flavor, and the same freedom to do whatever you want, and every single time will be great. We meet some astounding people around the world just so involved in our product. They take it further than we could possibly ever imagine because they've added their layer of inspiration to it. Aura King is actually what the chef puts out at the end of the day. If you're right in the heart of your customer, you're going to do a better job. We've been doing this for 10 years, actually. I think our first collaboration dinner was 10 years ago. And uh, we, we find a lot of value in spending time with other chefs, and, and we learn so much. Uh, Aura King always puts on a two, three day event, so it's not just a, an in and an out. And you get to have these really deep and medical conversations, and I get to learn a few things from the sushi master here. <laughs> There's something really beautiful has happened. We've all bonded over uh, what started as a great product, and we're all into it. And over the years, it's become more than that. That community, it's so important. It's meaningful to us. I love that relationship side of things more than anything. Be able to tell that story, it needs to be real. You know, I'd rather tell that story from the heart. That relationship is there because there's care, genuine empathy for, for everybody that's part of that family. From all around the world, there is such a, a like-minded group of people. So when you may only catch up once a year or you've just met somebody for the first time, it doesn't actually take long to get on quite well with a lot of these people. For me, this is the really special part when the chefs get together with other chefs. One of the things that's been really interesting is watching the Aura King Salmon Awards grow globally. As a chef, you tend to be very, very isolated when you're working in your kitchen and when you're working long hours. It's a very, very demanding profession. And the great thing about the Aura King Awards is that it's a great collaboration between all the chefs when they come together. 
chef can bring in their creativity, their innovation. It's just a sort of camaraderie, which is really cool. For us to get the opportunity to come out and be all together, it's really, really special. Really nothing else in New Zealand that actually gets behind the chefs. This has grown significantly throughout the world. It's become a global competition. Keen, competitive and innovative collaborative chefs that get together to share what's going on within their own marketplaces and that's something very, very special which you don't get to see with many other products. It's a great competition to be a part of. It's been going for seven years and I was lucky enough to be part of it three years ago and to see where it is right now and how much more entries we're having every single year. I can't imagine how, what it's going to be like in five years. It can only be great things for chefs to be part of this. You've got people from far and wide, people from Japan and China and other parts of Asia and the States and Australia. The calibre of chefs that are here from around the world are pretty outstanding, you know, and they all believe in it as well, so it's a really special thing. Uh, Aura King Awards has become more than, than a salmon. It's become a, a, a gathering of, of like-minded chefs, and uh, as, as we go through the changes and think about being more sustainable, uh, the things that are important to us are the things that are important to Aura King too. We like to follow like-minded people, and we're, in, we're inspired by what they do. I would love to just thank like Aura King for them to be able to do this and take their, their time to put something this amazing together. It's, it's truly remarkable and I, I'm sure like every, every chef that's here and every person that's here like, feels the same way I do. My time in New Zealand has been absolutely incredible, to be honest with you. I mean, the biggest piece of us and what we always say is we know all our partners individually. And so one of the biggest concerns, I guess, or the biggest worries is coming out here. I said, it's, it's a salmon farm. Like, how personal can it be? And what story am I going to tell? And I talked the talk, and I wasn't really walking the walk. I hadn't been here. And so to step foot on it and see that it is really resembling a family farm. And it is something that is so incredible and so small scale, yet so much quality. You know you're buying a product that has a good story, that has reputation behind it and has been verified. That's really important. It has trust. And that's what consumers want. They want to trust that this has been done with integrity. We're aligned with the UN and the Ocean Platform and the Global Salmon Initiative. But the most nuts and bolts certification that we use is the best aquaculture practices. It is a really credible a research body that really looks at what are the impacts and the risks of farming in this way. We all want to make better decisions. I don't know anyone who doesn't. This is a tool that's giving customers that transparency to say, yes, you can choose this product and we have done the homework for you. The biggest leap is yet to happen. It is Blue Endeavour. It is New Zealand's first open ocean fin fish farm. We should be able to produce amazing quality fish out there and we should be able to produce these different varieties of king salmon that we aspire to grow. It will enable a scale that isn't achievable where we currently farm in the inner sounds. Last year, the government set an aspiration of a $3 billion sector by 2035. The biggest contributor to that will be open ocean salmon farming off the South Island. The government's aquaculture strategy that was launched last September is going to enable more support, especially for the industry. There is risk, no doubt about it. It is a challenge, but an exciting challenge. We honestly believe we could be New Zealand's most valuable sector. At the same time, we could be New Zealand's greenest primary sector. If we manage it well, if we've got the vision about where we want to go, if we do things in the right way and if we take people with us, if we want to play our part in creating all of that. There's so much potential associated with Blue Endeavour that is literally the blue horizon, the blue frontier for us.
wonderful New Zealand product, this beautiful fish, is now being served in the great restaurants in Sydney and in Tokyo and in the US. It's a product that can cover all bases from the most pure, the most simple, right through to something that can be served in a three-star Michelin restaurant at the most fine dining table in the world.